For each workspace, we, we want to build a GLM that adequately describes or models the relationship between the predictor variables and the response variable in our data set. There may be complex multivariate relationships that one-way analysis would miss or double count. The resulting model should be predictive about future examples outside this data set. The underlying response might be expected claim frequency or number of claims arising on a policy or claim size or cost from each claim that does arise or competitor prices or competitive position, etc. We want to build a model that achieves a good fit that achieves a good compromise between fitting the historical data well, since the past is normally reflective of the future, but without fitting to noise in historical data, since historical noise is not reflective of the future. We want to find a good model that is as simple as possible without systematically under or overfitting segments of the historical data. We do this by ensuring only statistically significant parameters are kept in the model simplifying and modifying variables as we go along by grouping categorical variables and fitting splines to continuous variables. And then after that, we can use machine learning to mine the model residuals and help point us in helpful directions. In the GLM construct page, selected from this drop-down menu, choose your data set, insurance, and then choose your workspace from that data set and begin modeling. If you ever forget what the settings for the workspaces were, just go back to the workspace settings page in here and take a look. Now, in the GLM construct page, the predictors are on the left hand side, the chart is in the middle. Let's take a look at the garage type predictor by clicking on it and talking through this chart. The grey bars show the weighted number of records or exposure in insurance parlance for each level of this variable. The right axis refers to the grey columns. The categorical variables are split based on what was in your file. Most vehicles in the data are parked in a garage. Some were parked in a carport. on the street or at a train station. And a small number, 123, by hovering over it, had a dot as the text value. If we just cut to a numerical predictor, like age, we see that the groupings down the bottom here are based on the bandings chosen in the workspace settings page, i.e. 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30, etc. Recall from before that each band includes the lower bound, but not the upper bound. For example, anyone aged exactly 20 will be in the 20 to, 20 to less than 25 band, not in the 15 to less than 20 band. Get a quick sense for one-way relationships between each predictor and response from the red line. The red line is one way in the sense that this is what you would see if you summarized frequency by age band in a one-way fashion without taking into account the effect of other factors at the same time. Young drivers have a higher frequency than older, higher power cars are, high, are higher than lower power, males have higher claim frequency than females, vehicle value shows a slight, a very slight upward relationship and higher car shows slightly higher frequency than car insurance policies without higher car coverage. If all we were interested in was each one-way relationship between the predictors and the response, then, then we could stop here. But this would be very misleading because the predictor variables might be correlated with each other. Imagine a situation where all 17-year-olds buy cheap cars worth less than $1,000. A one-way analysis of vehicle value would show cheap cars to have very high claim frequency. But it's not actually the value of the car that would be driving it. It's the correlation with driver age. If we look at all the, the effect of all the predictors simultaneously, 
using multivariate techniques like GLMs, we can separate out the two effects, effectively stripping away the driver age effect and forming a view on the pure vehicle value effect. The value that modeling brings is to separate out complex interrelationships like this and see the pure effect of each one. This concept of pure effects will be very important in the modeling stage.